to our kids service. We're so excited for you to see everything we have for you. But before we do that, we need you to stand up, make some room, because we're gonna jump into some worship. Hey kids, let's get on our feet and clap our hands as we sing, I'm in love with Jesus. Let's get off our feet. is something we all do. Some may have started early and some not yet. But we're all growing and that's why we can't think about ourselves. That's walking in humility. It's choosing others first and giving up what we think we deserve. Walking in humility allows God to help us grow from the ground up. Community Garden, growing from the ground up.
Man, <coughs> too much dust. Hello, kids. I hope you had a great Easter week. Easter may be over, but we get to keep celebrating that Jesus is alive. And we're also going to keep growing more like Jesus as we grow in humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Humility isn't something that always comes easily for us. Often, it's, it's not easy to give up what you think you deserve. But as we grow to become more like Jesus, the more we'll grow in humility. With God's help, we can learn to put others first. But before we get into our Bible story, let's start with our big answer. What is the big answer? It's the answer to the big question. This is the question you should get from every important adult in your life, and that is, what did you learn in church today, kids? Our big answer for today is put others first because Jesus put us first. And our memory verse for this series comes from the book of Philippians, and it says, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble, value others more than you value yourself. And that comes out of the book of Philippians 2 and 3. Over this past year, we've been making our way through God's big story in the Bible. Today, we're jumping ahead to Philippians, which is the 11th book in the New Testament. Philippians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church he started in the city of Philippi. First, we need to pick up where we left off last week with Easter. Jesus died on the cross and was buried, but he came back to life. For 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, he appeared with his friends and spent time with them. Then Jesus returned to heaven to be with God. But the news about Jesus spread. More and more people began to follow Jesus, including Paul. Paul traveled all over the place, starting brand new churches. He traveled to the city of Colossus and started a church there. Paul also went to the city of Ephesus and started a church there. And on one of his journeys, Paul spent three months in the Greek city of Philippi. In Philippi, Paul shared the news about, a, about Jesus with a businesswoman named Lydia. Lydia welcomed to the new church to meet her home. Unfortunately, because some people didn't like how Paul was sharing the good news about Jesus, Paul was thrown in prison. Oh no! But Paul was released and continued his travels. I am a free man. I think that's what he meant. Paul kept going around and starting new churches, sharing the good news about Jesus and encouraging people who follow Jesus already to grow in their faith. Several more times, Paul was jailed for sharing about Jesus. Here we go again. But while he was in prison, he used his time to write letters to the new churches. In these letters, Paul often urged people to live with humility as a way to follow Jesus. First, he wrote to the Colossians. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and be patient. And then to Ephesus, don't be proud at all. Be completely gentle. Be patient. Put up with one another in love. Wow. Again, Paul encouraged the people to be humble, not proud. Now let's look at some of Paul's letters to the Philippians. Just like he did with the Colossians and Ephesians, Paul also encouraged the Philippians to put others first. He explained to them what humility is all about. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than you value yourself. None of you should look out just for your own good. Each of you should also look out for the good of others. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. Wow. Well, that tells us exactly what it means to be humble, doesn't it? If we want to put others first and value others more than ourselves, we should look to the one who did it better than anyone. We should think and act as Jesus did. That brings up an important question. How exactly did Jesus show humility? Jesus prayed and talked to God over and over. Like this, kids. Dear God, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for teaching us how to love our neighbors. And how we love our neighbors is showing kindness. Amen. 
Jesus took the time away from the crowd to spend, to spend time alone with God. Two hours later. Jesus also showed humility by showing love, especially to who we consider unimportant or forgotten. Jesus wasn't worried about what other people thought or about impressing people. He just loved it, people and showed them how much they mattered to him. Jesus taught that we should show humility by giving in secret. We should do good things for others without making a big deal of it. Jesus also taught that we should show humility in our relationships by doing more than is required. We should do even more than we have to. Then Jesus gave us the ultimate example of humility with what he did for us on the cross. Paul goes on to say, in his very nature, he was God. Jesus was equal with God, but Jesus didn't take advantage of that fact. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He was made just like human beings. He appeared as a man. He was humble and he obeyed God completely. He did this even though it led to his death. Even worse, he died on the cross. Jesus put us first by dying on the cross for our sins. Jesus is God's son, and yet he lived it a life of humility. He even died on the cross for us. Now, we can respond by following Jesus in the example, as Paul said, to value others more than ourselves. Every day, we can look for opportunities to set aside the things we want in order to put others first. Just like our big pastors say, Put others first because Jesus put us first. Got to go back to work, kids. See ya. God loved us all so much that he chose to send Jesus to take care of our sins. And all we have to do is accept that gift and invite him into our hearts. Now sin is what keeps us separate. Until we say we're sorry for our sins and ask Jesus into our hearts, we aren't a part of God's family. So I want everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. And if you're here today and you'd like to make Jesus your best friend and start following him, would you just say this prayer with me? Just repeat after me and say, Dear God, I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. I'm a sinner and I'm sorry. Jesus, I give you my life. Be my Lord and my very best friend. In your name I pray, amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, we'd love to hear about it. Have that important adult email us at kids at lifechurchgb.com. Put in the subject line, I'm choosing to follow Jesus. And we'd love to send you a gift. We love you so much. It's time for Memory Verse Breakdown! Hey kids, today we're gonna break down this week's Memory Verse. Are you ready? Okay. Here's this week's memory verse. You think you got it? Try saying it out loud. All right, let's take some words away. You think you still got it? Try saying it out loud again. All right, let's bring those words back and see how you did. Did you get it right? Awesome. Well, that's this week's Memory Verse Breakdown. How'd you do? Memory Verse Breakdown! Oh, hey there, friends! 
Oh, I, I don't know about you, but I just love the summer games. Oh, the javelin throwing, the gold medals, the archery, the gold medals, the swimming, the gold medals. Oh, I just love it all, especially the gold medals. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Why don't we play a game that involves, you guessed it, gold medals? Well, the rules are simple. I'll give you the name of a Bible character. Then I'll show you three medals with facts about that Bible character. Two of these facts will be incorrect, but one will be true. That's the beautiful, shiny gold medal. So when you think you know which medal is true, hold up the number of fingers for that medal and shout it out. One, two, or three. If you get it right, you're still in the game. If not, you can keep playing, but please take a seat. Easy enough, right? Great! Everybody on your feet! Our first Bible character is David. Now, which of these is true about David? One, David was Israel's first king. Two, David had a pet bear. Three, David defeated a giant. Remember, hold up one, two, or three fingers based on which metal you think is telling the truth. Okay, time's up. Who's holding up? Three fingers. You're correct. David trusted God and defeated the giant Goliath. Good job. Let's try another. Our next Bible character is Jonah. Now, which of these is true about Jonah? One, Jonah was a fisherman. Two, Jonah was from Nineveh. Three, Jonah was swallowed by a fish. Okay, time to get those fingers up. Which metal do you think is telling the truth? Time's up! Who's holding up three fingers? Because you are correct! Jonah spent three days in the belly of a fish before it spit him out on dry land. Let's do another one. Esther is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is true about Esther? One, Esther was a queen. Two, Esther lived with seven dwarves. Three, Esther was married to Haman. All right, it's time to decide. Which medal do you think is telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up one finger? You are correct. Esther was a queen who helped save the Jewish people. Let's try another. Noah is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is true about Noah? One, Noah had only one son. Two, Noah built an ark. Three, Noah walked on water. So, what do you think? Which of these medals is correct and therefore a shiny gold medal? Oh, time's up! Who is holding up two fingers? You are correct! Noah did build the ark as God instructed him to. Good job! Eve is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is true about Eve? One, Eve was tempted by a penguin. Two, Eve was tempted by a turtle. Three, Eve was tempted by a snake. It's time to decide which of these medals is telling the truth. That's it, time is up. Who is holding up three fingers? You are correct. Eve was tempted by a snake in the Garden of Eden. Nice work. Ooh, Peter is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is true about Peter? One, Peter walked on water. Two, 
Peter betrayed Jesus for money. Three, Peter was afraid of roosters. So, what do you think? Which of these medals is actually the gold medal? Time's up! Who is holding up three fingers? You should be holding up only one! Peter walked on water with Jesus. Oh, Samson is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is true about Samson? One, Samson was very weak. Two, Samson was very strong. Three, Samson is actually a pro wrestler. It's time to make your choice. Which of these medals is telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up two fingers? You are correct. God gifted Samson with incredible strength. Are you still on your feet? If so, very impressive. Well done. Way to find all those gold medals, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. Before you leave, have that important delt in your life. Go to lifechurchgreenbay.com forward slash kids where you can grab your Kids Connect card and there you can discuss the big answer, your memory verse, and even more. We love you so much and have a great week. Thank <laughs> you.